Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I've got two replays in the German Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank, the Panzer 58 Mutz. Now this is a tank you're going to be able to get for free in the Season Pass at level 100, and it's a pretty decent little tank. I remember it, playing it from pre 6.0 a little bit and feeling a little bit underwhelmed with it and just thinking it was a little bit mediocre. And really going into it, playing it now, I was like... That's kind of what I was expecting, just with the gun being a little bit better. And I wanted to kit it out to make the gun better, but it actually did get buffed. And I do remember, actually, after the first game I played, I thought, I'm hitting people for, like, between 270 and 300 quite often here. What happened? Oh, yeah, they buffed it. So they changed it to 280 Alpha. So, in fact, let's have a quick look at what they actually changed on this tank. So, on the Mutz, they did buff it in the Leopard Line Reforge, and they gave it 280 Alpha. Extra 100 hit points, and from 0.36 to 0.34 on the accuracy, and they buffed the dispersion on movement and turning the turret from 0.18 to 0.16. Now, like I say, I remember the tank being just a little bit mediocre and a little bit like, eh, to play, you know. There was a lot more fun tanks out there. There was a lot of tanks that did pretty much the same thing, but just better. And I, was, I didn't really enjoy it that much. So when I set it up... I kitted it out to make the gun really good because I remember the gun being quite troll with 0.36 accuracy and especially pre 6.0 accuracy as well and it just liking to miss shots that it shouldn't. So, you know, I made the crew like that and I put like, in terms of equipment, I do run rammer, vert stabs and optics on it. But seeing the buffs and knowing how it felt, I'd probably experiment a little bit more with the tank. So I'd probably actually take off the vert stabs and put like a camo net on to be honest because you could make the camo way better on this tank in that regard and i don't think you'd suffer for taking the vert stabs off anymore and i'd probably well let's have a look at the crew that i actually run on the tank as well before i describe what i'd probably change out so on the crew i run born leader Rapid reload, six sense, trap mechanic, situational awareness, steady aim, snapshot, run and gun, and off and camouflage expertise. Sorry. Now camouflage expertise naturally because it's a medium tank. I want to make the camo a little bit better, but also help the gun out a lot with the accuracy perks. Now, with this gun feeling so nice, and actually, realistically, you know, I could probably take off trap mechanic as well. I would probably end up actually taking silent driving instead of trap mechanic to make the camo better while moving and then maybe lose snapshot or something like that for muffled shot just to make the camo really really good on the tank but also to be honest i'd probably i might not take muffled shot and just stick with all the gun perks like you've seen to nullify the fact that i didn't take vert stabs but quite but what i've shown you is what i'm running in these two replays and it's how it made the tank perform as well as it does in these games because it made the gun performance really, really good, having all those gun perks and vert stabs on there. And it made it really quite nice gun to use. And having that, actually having that 280 alpha buff that it got, and having 280 alpha instead of 240, made this gun feel really quite nice. I can't, I've, I've actually been playing some of the 280 alpha guns that got changed, like the Panther 2 and stuff like that. And the 280 alpha is actually a pretty nice sort of threshold to be at, because you tend to roll quite close to 300. A decent amount but you also don't roll much lower than 240 that often either so you know you get a decent sort of stretch of rolls which is quite nice and yeah the mobility of this tank with the decent camo and the nice elf nicer alpha now and then also you know the pretty decent camo makes the mux the mux you know like a pretty decent all-rounder to be honest and a quite enjoyable little tank and it's a good tank to get for free as well you see in 5.8 second reloads nothing to be sniffed at and 280 alpha obviously like you see in the 293 on the super sherman there it, it gets hitting and it gets racking all that damage pretty quickly and you know with the tank being able to do this sort of thing and you've got pretty reasonable pen on the gun as well you can get a lot done and you can have a lot of fun with it. And like I say, f for free? Well, you're not going to be moaning at it for free, really. I mean, 212 pen on the standard round on the AP is pretty good. It's pretty average for tier 8 mediums these days. That 212 to 2... Well, that 210 to 220 mark. And 259 on the premium APCR is really going to help you slap up everything you're going to face, really. You're gonna, only really going to struggle when you come in against sort of the more super heavily armoured tanks. And yes... 
like I say, in my games that I played in the tank, I really kind of enjoyed it. So we're on this first replay, and this first replay is on Nominee Nom. And on Nominee Nom, so far, we've racked up 3.1k damage with 1,700 assistance. They've only got four tanks left, so we're trying to get up behind them and get some shots in. Now, unfortunately, we ended up ricocheting off the CS44 because we didn't quite have the penable shot on him. And then we actually bounced off the side of the turret of the Oho as well, which realistically we weren't going to go through unless we actually fired premium there. But now we get a shot into the back of the 50TP to track him in place. He ends up repairing, though, as he sees that we've actually got him permatracked. The 705 comes in. I'm like, oh, God, track him in place before he gets his gun down on me. Please don't kill me. And thankfully, bro didn't kill me. And we finish the game with 4K damage and 2.5K assistance. Coming top of the team with 1987 base XP. The Ace Tanker and the Confederate. A really nice game for the Panzer 58 Mutts. And it kind of showed what you can do with it. You know, you've got good gun depression, so you can use it on a ridgeline quite nicely. You've got decent camo. You've got a good rate of fire with nice alpha. You know, pretty accurate gun these days. It, it does everything pretty decently. The one thing it doesn't have is armor. It has Batcher armor. Yeah, it's probably a good way of describing it. Batcher armor. Where it's, on paper, absolutely paper thin. Right, it doesn't bounce, it shouldn't bounce anything, but it's got the sorts of random little angles on it where you'll get a tank shoot at you and it'll just ricochet, and you'll sit there going, Oh, all right, and you know, that, that sort of armor. Like a batch actually should never bounce anything realistically, but it does because angles. And the Mutz is kind of similar in that way, mainly on the turret and the upper plate. The one other thing that this tank I have noticed does suffer from a little bit is Amarak and Fires. I think it's got frontal fuel, fuel tanks or just in the sides. So it does get set on fire a little bit. You've got to be careful of that. And it does like to get its ammo rack damaged by people shooting you through the drive wheels. So just be aware of that, that it can get ammo racked at times and it can get set on fire uh, a little bit. But you bear with it. I say, I, you know, I, I've had a pretty decent time with it. So this second replay, we're on Erlenberg. And if you want to see another perspective of this replay, go check out Randy's video in his... M41 Brazil because he's got another perspective of this game in his Brazil because he also goes on to have a really nice game and yeah this is the other perspective of the replay while in the mods and naturally he's in oh gone come on now bro he's in the light tank so he's like oh, I'll go spotting it's like okay sir let me just shoot the things you spot so as you can see the super Sherman gets lit up that first shot yeah I don't know it just it didn't want to hit while this gun has been far better, it still does have those moments of, but why? Like that, where did that, I mean, to be honest, it was probably going to miss because that, that Super Sherman was pulling back, but where did, why did it fly off to the left? Okay, we're still going to keep popping shots in, but they're not quite going there. I'm facing the other way to sort of get out of render if I end up getting spotted, but we're trying to snipe this guy's capola, it's not quite happening. We can't quite see the Amex 65 team, it's like, oh, hello, Mr. Falcon. Okay, Mots, please, bro. Just hit just hit the target. Oh my goodness, it went really low and did track damage only when we could have finished him off. This is where this this gun used to be like this all of the time. And it still can be. So you you know, it's not the perfect laser accurate sniper that it is, or that it it wants to be. It's not like a lot of the German tank guns. How does that bounce on a super Sherman? That was premium! Oh my god, we've been unlucky with some of these rounds in this game so far. But, we finally get to shut down the Super Show, and we get a nice shot into the side of the 65T. The Batch at 25T gets spotted over there, and we reload AP, because we don't need premium rounds to go through a Batch at 25T, sorry. And now, we've broken through their flank on the K-line. You've seen in that little engagement there, where the gun can be derpy, and can be like, yeah, I'm just not going to hit anything you're firing at here. And it's like... Okay, Mr. Mutz, please, just calm down. This bat chat decides to YOLO in on Randy. Randy's like, uh, the bat chat has come in. It's like, mm, okay, we'll, we'll shoot it. And I'm, I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure what that bat chat was doing. He just threw his whole life away to try and get Randy. And we managed to, well, everyone managed to shut him down. So now we're coming over to here with Randy, though, because it's like, okay, let's try and get over here and get rid of artillery. Because you look where they have got a guy spotted at the minute. He's at B4. And it's like, hello, there's the GUI. 
So let's go after this guy. As you can see, it was just before the artillery changes because he's still got 550 health. We slap a shot into him, which puts him down to a one shot for us. And I'm looking at this going, oh, good gravy. He's going to slap me now. But thankfully, he ends up not firing at all. And we get to shut down the tier 10 artillery. There's a E100 in the distance, which we're never going to pen with the AP rounds. So we load the APCR rounds, just feathering out a shot on his lower plate. We get unspotted, thankfully. We move a little bit, though, because he did start looking at us. And now we're just looking again for that shot into the lower plate, which we get one in, which is nice. And while this guy's in the open for us to shoot at, and Randy's spotting it, we may as well help him out, get some assistance, and get some free damage into this guy's lower plate, if we can keep finding it. We do manage to get another shot into it, though, as he gets unspotted. And, well, he gets lit up again, but then disappears, and then reappears. It's like, well, I'll just shoot the E100 then, and we get to shut down the E100. We're up to 2.5k damage with 405 assistance, and now... Looking at the guys that are spotted, we've got they've got a guy in the cap, but we've also got guys going towards it. I want to get to this ridge line and get underneath the gun line of anyone that might come on top of that ridge, and then try and see if we can spot anything else that's along the nine line and try to start shooting them essentially. And from this little ridge, obviously we can shoot straight down the nine line. So as we're coming over, a 50 TP gets spotted, and it's like, okay, what else is over here? Oh, there's a chieftain. We unfortunately missed the shot that snapped at the chieftain, but we're just. Waiting for the reload, and we're going to pull back around and see if, if we can play. We're basically playing chicken with this chieftain at the minute because it's like, well, I'm just going to keep snapping some shots into your lower plate slash side armor and see if you can chance hitting me. But then Randy's saying, I think these guys are coming for you. And I'm like, yeah, these guys are definitely coming for me, Randy. This is this is not good. We load the HE because we can absolutely trash this SU 130 PM with the HE. One in for 300 odd, another one in for 350. He slaps us up. Randy manages to shut him down. We load the APCR because it's a 50 TP coming after us. And I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to get clapped by this 50 TP for 560. That's not good. And I'm like, please, Mr. T57 Heavy, help me. And actually, he's stock. He's got the stock 122mm gun. You can see it. he's not got a big round muzzle break. He's got like a slimmer muzzle break. And, yeah, he didn't even look at me. He ended up seeing the teeth for some heavy, actually, which in hindsight, looking at him, he actually hasn't got much hit points. And the fact that he's not got much hit points is what drew him to try and shoot him instead, and he never even got a shot off. And, fortunately enough, he got destroyed. And now we've got this chieftain in front of us. It's like, hello, Mr. Chieftain. Let me just not hit your drive wheel and hit your upper plate and ricochet. Okay. But, fortunately enough, we get the chance to shut him down. And we managed to shut down the Chieftain as well. We're up to 5k damage with 876 assistance. And now, sadly, we're capping at the minute. And it's like, oh, no, I just want one, one or two more shots of damage. Come on, people, people, please. So we're going to try and get into a position to get another shot or two. And someone's actually left the cap. And it's like, yes, we've still got another 30 seconds to do more damage. Good, get, get going. So we're going to get motoring towards these guys over here. There's a Chieftain quite out in the open. We get a nice shot into his side. And I'm looking at him going, wow, I've got a Levish Lilos here for killing two tier 10s. Let me get a, an Oskins medal. And the shot ricochets off his side. So we don't get the chance to get the Oscars medal. But he drives out. And it's like, oh, thank you very much, sir. And we shut down that chieftain there. Then we get a shot into the Lynx 6x6. Six six, but unfortunately, we cap out. And that ends our run. And we probably would have gone on to get about 6k there, unfortunately. But it is what it is. We still had a great game with the Mutts. We're finished with the victory. Five kills. 5.7k damage, nearly. 876 assistance. The Oskins medal. Ace tanker. The high caliber. Oskins for killing three tanks two tiers higher. 2.4k base XP. A really great game for the Panzer 58 Mutts, which you'll all be getting for free in a tier 10 game. It's a pretty damn nice tank since it's been buffed. It's a pretty okay tank to get for free. I think a lot of people will have fun with it. Some people might get frustrated with the lack of armor, but it does pretty well. So as always, everybody, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. And go check out Randy's video in the Brazil.